Well, hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, glad you could join me for this video. Now, this is part three of our PT-109 patrol torpedo boat by Ravel in 170 second scale. So in this video, we're going to be doing some weathering and of course the final reveal at the end. So you're not going to want to miss that. So the first thing we need to do is to apply our decals. Now we've already prepared this surface in our last video of painting our PT-109 by giving it a good gloss clear coat. Now it doesn't have to be real glossy, uh, it just needs to be a good smooth slick surface um, that will uh, take these uh, decals and allow it to set without doing some silvering. Now there are cases where you're going to have some silvering anyway, uh, no matter what you try. And then sometimes decals go on just great. So I am going to use the uh, micro set just to prepare the surface. And we'll lay the decal down on top of that. And uh, these are water slide decals. So we just got to soak them for a little bit and then we'll take them out. Dry off all the excess water and then we'll be ready to go. So here I'm using one of those silicone tip uh, brushes or applicators, um, whatever, you, whatever you call these things, uh, so that I don't poke any holes through my decal. Now these decals are really thin and I, I give uh, Ravel quite a bit of credit for uh, really doing a good job with these. And uh, unlike some other kits that I've done, uh, the instrument cluster decal actually sets in. Uh, and, and, and fits the model. After that dries, I do come back in with a little bit of microsol. Now I've had some issues in the past where the microsol actually affected the paint, so I just put it right on top of the decal to help it set um, around all the detail on the dash area. And as with uh, the rest of the decals that go on the actual model, uh, it's just the numbering for the uh, the boat itself, the 109s. There's only four of those, and then we got our uh, graduated water depth mark that's on the uh, stern of the vessel. And these go on really well. Uh, there are other decals for the stand, and uh, I did have some silvering with them, but I didn't uh, coat the stand with the gloss clear. So lesson learned there. We'll make sure we do that from now on. So it's always a good idea to make sure that you press down the decal because even though we've gloss coated this, there still are uh, little nooks and crannies in the paint. Uh, flat paint is just not smooth. So now we're going to take some uh, nautical blue and some rainy day gray, which is a little bit lighter gray than what we had uh, for the base color of the vessel. And here we're just checking our mix of the two. It's about a 50-50 mix, but I need to lighten it up just a little bit. And this is Hillbilly Paint Mix in 101, and you kind of know how that goes. <laughs> uh, no specific uh, percentages. Uh, so here anyway we are doing some uh, sponge chipping and uh, the way to get good realistic chips is to make sure that you unload nearly all the paint out of the sponge. This will give you really small chips uh, and that's really what you want to do. Uh, great big chips are not in scale uh, especially for this particular kit which is uh, 172. Uh, you don't want it to look uh, rather overbearing so uh, the whole idea here is if you want to you can overlap and build up the small chips which will look a lot more authentic uh, than it will look with just a great big uh, blob of paint <laughs> and I tend to be a little bit uh, heavy-handed here but uh, the whole idea is to not over chip the boat too much and you can get carried away and just and just have way too many chips so we just want to keep it light, lightly worn. So also there's going to be some scratches, so we'll just take the same chipping color 
and a fine brush and we'll put us a couple of scratches here and there a little bit on the superstructure and we'll also go in and put some scratches on the hull I imagine around the bow and the stern areas is where the most accumulation of scratches would be so after that uh, it's time to come in and do some panel liner now this is to me is black panel liner and what we're going to be doing here is using this to actually draw out these details as you can imagine a absolutely gray vehicle or a vehicle <laughs> well yeah you're, you're driving it but but your vessel your boat um, it having a pretty much solid gray surface other than the pre-shading that we did uh, doesn't really allow you to see all the small details uh, very well and so the black panel liner is really going to help bring this out so after our panel liner dries uh, we can come back in with a little bit of uh, enamel thinner because the panel liner is an enamel based product and we can clean that up now the ease of cleanup is all going to depend upon whether or not we've uh, laid down our uh, gloss clear coat which allows us to number one clean up anything that we don't want you're going to have spots that you don't want so uh, the other thing is that the uh, gloss clear coat helps our panel liner flow uh, nicely around uh, those little sharp edges now here I'm coming in with a q-tip or a cotton bud or an earbud or <laughs> whatever whatever you call it wherever you're from um, and uh, it's just uh, lightly dampened with some um, um, enamel thinner and I'm very lightly going over these details on the hole here to clean up that panel liner you just don't want to scrub really hard uh, because the cotton will conform down into the grooves and you will remove all your panel liner so here we're taking a look at some areas here marked J now that's the color um, that I haven't painted I uh, should have painted that earlier so we're gonna have to go in and paint these pads I think these are like non-slip areas on the on the vessel for the step and at the gun positions so we go in and we mask off uh, right around uh, these square areas here and like I say I think it's non-slip uh, areas and then we just shoot that with a little bit of uh, the Vallejo Panzer Gray and then we just pull off our our mask there Time to do a little bit of dry brushing here. We're going to use this uh, Tester's Enamel Flat Steel. And enamels, I, for me anyway, uh, really, really are uh, smooth and easy to control, uh, I think is what I'm trying to look for here. <laughs> uh, when we want to do some, uh, some dry brushing. And the other thing is, uh, we can come in and uh, blend out uh, any areas where we get too much uh, paint on the surface so the key to really having a good dry brushing here which just it's all intended to highlight just the edges uh, that would be worn through uh, on the finish is that uh, you want to unload as much paint off the brush as possible so it's about time to give it a flat clear coat so as many small pieces as uh, necessary uh, we're just going to reduce that number uh, as much as we can so I'm going to glue these cupolas in place here and we're also attach our our weaponry uh, such as these uh, twin 50 caliber machine guns and I'm just going to use a little bit of to me extra thin there uh, to attach the guns to the cupola and also we're kind of adjusting it uh, to see where we want these cupolas pointing and it doesn't matter because these things have 360 degree uh, rotation but it's however you want to display 
this particular uh, watercraft which position you want the guns. So I put all my guns facing more or less forward except for the uh, rear anti-aircraft cannon. So we are going to attach uh, this rear deck here. I think it's over the engine room. Definitely an engineering space. And I'm using the thick Tamiya cement for that. So we just need to set it into place. And remember we protected those uh, glue points earlier. So with a lot of the vessel uh, already built up, we're going to go ahead and spray it with this Model Master Acryl Flat Clear. And that should be the end of spraying anything on this boat. So I've decided to go ahead and we're going to remove these masks off of our main deck. And these are covering up those spaces um, which are inside the cabin areas. Uh, this is the chart room or chart house. You know, I never have figured that out. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I, can't, I just can't remember. Um, speaking of remembering, uh, don't forget that we did put this little one millimeter wide mask down into these grooves. So you're going to want to get that out of there. So next, uh, before we can attach our superstructures, we need to install all the clear parts uh, into our portals or portholes. <laughs> I think it's the same thing. Uh, so I am just going to place these uh, right where they need to go. And then we're just going to come in with the, uh, to me, extra thin. And I'm just going to touch it to two alternate corners on each one of the panes here um, and that will just wick right around the window and we shouldn't have to mess with it anymore now if it was an enclosed area uh, you got to be careful because uh, model glue can fog up clear parts and you don't want that to happen also we're going to attach this ladder um, and just I'm just using a little bit of to me extra thin for that and now it's time to drop this uh, rear superstructure area uh, onto the boat. And just press it down nice and firm and everything should be fine. <laughs> so with our glue points all cleaned up, we're going to just uh, allow this to me extra thin to seep right down in. And that should be more than enough to hold it. We'll course glue both sides and here we need to put uh, this air intake uh, it's a some sort of vent I cannot remember what they're called I should really check that out if I'm going to build a lot of boats huh but we just want to make sure that it is facing forward and now we can attach the uh, forward superstructure or the wheelhouse or the I've actually seen in some of the stuff that I've read about boats uh, they also can call this the cockpit so that's kind of interesting I usually refrain from calling anything a cockpit unless it's on an aircraft <laughs> so this is testers clear part cement and uh, window maker and we have some uh, windows that are actually missing and that's why Ravel or the reason why I should say is that Ravel did not include these in the kit and so we're going to go ahead and make it with this uh, window maker here and you can see how easy this is just to drop on a toothpick and there you go. So we got this one here, and then there's three more in the uh, back of the vessel there. And now we're just attaching um, all the little parts that uh, we need to. Uh, the tank on the rear for a smoke generator. Of course, the raft up here on the, on the bow. And we also have these... Uh, shields that need to go in I believe them to be splash shields or spray shields or something like that <laughs> keeps it 
keeps the boat from being swamped, I guess. And then, of course, we can't forget uh, the ship's wheel. Otherwise, uh, you have no way to steer the vessel. So, <laughs> we get that glued into place. And also, we're going to put our windshield in at this point. And uh, I'm just using a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin here and barely touching it to the corners. And as you can, hopefully you can see in the video that it will just wick right up underneath it. But you basically need to have a really dry brush uh, to do this. Otherwise, you'll get a big shiny glob uh, on your paint and you don't want to do that. So I almost forgot to paint uh, these navigation lights here, uh, which we need to do now. Uh, so we're going to use this X27. This is the clear red uh, from Tamiya. And we're also, uh, for the green, we're going to use the Tamiya X25. And we're just going to paint those navigation lights. And I've rested my hand on a box here and everything to be really, really steady and just using a real fine brush. So it is uh, red to port and green to starboard, in case you're wondering. <laughs> so. Next up, we're going to attach our torpedo tubes, and I'm going to use a Tamiya X or a Tamiya Thick cement for this. And we just want to set and press our torpedoes into place. So our boat is coming together. So we're going to do a little bit more weathering. In this particular case, we're going to use this titanium white. Now this is an artist oil paint, and I've placed it on cardboard to soak all that linseed oil out of it as much as possible. So it's been on there for about four hours. And I'm going to use a small brush here and... Uh, some enamel thinner as a carrier and I'm just going to go in with that and we're just going to put us in some uh, little bitty white dots here and there on the deck. The areas where I'm going to put this will be the areas that uh, I feel the crew are going to travel the most. Uh, they're not going to be stepping on the vents and the hatches all that much but they will be walking around these items. That's just kind of human nature. To do that and so uh, we will just put these dots on and take a little bit of the enamel thinner here and we're just going to start blending uh, and the whole intent here is to uh, blend this white in which will show a wear area uh, on our painted surface uh, you know the scuffing that kind of thing um, yeah so that's that's the whole point and, and try this. Hopefully I can pull it off. <laughs> It'll look all right. Um, so it wouldn't be a water vessel without um, the uh, vessel's country of origins flag on it. And here we've got Old Glory. So we're just going to soak that and in a little bit of water. These are also water slide just like the other decals. And uh, what we have here is a piece of aluminum foil which we are going to uh, put the flag on. Now Ravel gives us uh, this decal as one piece and you're supposed to fold it but I've decided to split it into two pieces the uh, I don't know call it the left and right side I guess. So we're just going to put that on our aluminum foil and using a q-tip we're just going to press it down and make sure that it's good and dry. Now I, I go ahead and I let this thing dry for, I don't know, it could be 45 minutes or so before I attach the other side. But before attaching the other side, I'm going to trim uh, the flag out uh, very carefully with a pair of scissors. And the reason why I'm going to do this is so that I can have edges that are a reference for uh, putting the decal on the opposite side. <laughs> it wouldn't, wouldn't do if uh, it was misaligned. And, and we don't want that. So here we have uh, both sides completed. And it came out pretty good. 
So now we need to attach it uh, to the flagpole. Uh, I'm assuming that's what we're going to call it. So <laughs> I, did, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, but for us today, it's a flagpole. So that's a little bit of CA glue just applied to the area where we want to attach the flag. And now all we got to do is get this thing to actually stick. So we haven't started bending and, and twisting the flag, you know, waving in the wind because uh, uh, we need this edge nice and straight. So we can attach it to the pole. And now all we got to do is let that dry. Now, it being medium strength super glue that we use there, or CA glue, uh, it doesn't take long before it's ready to go. And now I just need to hold it in place a little bit here. I'm using a toothpick for that. And since uh, the core of our flag is aluminum foil, we'll be able to put creases in it and waves and whatever it is that you want to put in it. And if perchance you don't get the look you like, you can straighten it out fairly well and give it another attempt. I would caution, not that I know this from experience, because this is the first flag I've ever done this way, um, but I would caution trying to uh, refold it too many times. Um, you could detach the, uh, uh, the decal from the aluminum foil, you know, so you wouldn't want to do that. So here we are uh, with our completed PT-109. Um, I really enjoyed this build. Uh, you don't have to be a, a model master to uh, accomplish this. Now, I do believe, however, that Ravel could have done a little bit better job uh, when it comes to the fit of some of these parts, especially uh, your cabin areas and some of the gaps and stuff that uh, we ran into. They, you know, for a kit that was manufactured in 2018, you know, or first released, I should say, in 2018, uh, they could have done a better job. Uh, of course, I guess, I guess we could all do a better job. Uh, I could probably have done a better job modeling it. But there's always room for improvement. Now, this is a buildable kit. Uh, I haven't run into one of those kits that are not buildable yet. Uh, I imagine my day is coming. So, with that, I think uh, beginners and experienced models both uh, could enjoy building this kit. And so if you haven't built a PT-109, go out and get you one. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, enjoy building it. And so that will wrap this video up, guys, and this series. Uh, we'll be starting a new series next week, and I hope you'll tune in for that. Uh, special thanks to all my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys uh, coming and taking a look at uh, the kits that I'm building and leaving comments. Uh, that's greatly appreciated. Now, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. It's free doesn't cost anything and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that uh, you won't miss any upcoming videos and upcoming projects that uh, we'll be building in the near future now if you would like uh, go ahead and leave me a comment I'd appreciate that I always love hearing from all of you so till next time you guys stay safe and I'll see you in the next one